Hello everyone and welcome back to St. Andrew TV. I'm your host Andrew and today I'm going to teach you how to shape your cowboy hat or western hat. What we have here is a pretty basic hat that you can buy at any western store but we're going to give it some flair and shape it ourselves. It's going to look something like this when it's all said and done. This is just going to be an amateur milliner class and you can be a mad hatter in the comfort of your own home. So let's get to it. Let's get the steam going. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to flip the hat over. This hat has lining. I prefer not to work with hats when the lining is still attached. And all this is, is a little bit of glue. Actually, it's been pretty worn already, so that was easy to come out. We'll set this over here. We'll put the leather band inside the hat. Next thing is this hat actually has a drawstring. So we are going to remove that as well. We are gonna send a lot of steam onto this hat and hopefully we can get our desired shape. And that sound you're hearing is my steamer firing up. There she goes. If you see steam coming out of the right side of your screen, that is completely planned. Final thing we do before we start actually working on the hat, we are gonna take some masking tape you're gonna place it around your finger with the adhesive end on the outside, like so. And we are gonna get all that crap off the face of the hat. All the hair, all the lint, all the dust. I'd say that looks pretty good. And for those of you new to the hats, ribbon always goes in back. That ribbon should set on the back of your head. Okay, so the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to get this hat back into a very base shape, which is an open crown, and the brim's already flat, so that should be okay. I'm just going to soak this hat in warm, moist heat for a good while. I do not place the steamer on the inside of the hat because if it gets close to the leather, the leather will contort and it might not fit your head right after this. I only place the steamer on the outside of the hat. Now you may also do this with an iron. However, it'll take you much longer and it's a little more difficult to concentrate heat on a specific area. Also, before I go any further, this can be done with wool, rabbit, beaver, this is pretty universal of how you work with hats. Starting to get some reaction from the fibers in the hat. I should be able to push this thing up to its base. Oh yeah. We work with the crown first because it's easier to work with the brim without obstructing the crown than it is to work with the crown without obstructing the brim. Like you saw in the picture, we're gonna do a crease down the middle and then a slight pinch in the front. So now that we have kind of an open crown, I'm gonna work with it a little more because there's a pretty noticeable ridge line there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is establish which way is the front end. It is this one here. Kind of get a center line on your hat. We're gonna apply more moist heat and we're gonna add our crease down the middle. Now this one does not have any specific top except the crease. You can also do this with a telescope crown or a teardrop crown. This is just an example of how you do some milliner work. You can find any shape on the internet that you please and craft pretty much any hat to look like what you found on the internet. It's actually relatively simple. I mean, if I can do it, you can do it. I have never had classes. This is all self-taught, a lot of trial and error. So we're gonna crease it right down the middle. And the beauty about working with these kind of hats is if you mess up, you can heat it back up again and start over. Like my crease isn't completely even, 
and it's kind of bunching up right here so I can apply more heat and I can fix it right away. The beauty of hats that are made out of wool, rabbit, beaver, is they're never dead. You can always work with them. Say that looks pretty good. Oh yeah, that's turning out really nice. So the next thing we're gonna do is add the little pinch to the front end of the hat. Remember, ribbon goes in back. So this is your front, apply some heat. And we're just going to pinch the front. I kind of hold my fingers like this, like an E, to give it even pressure on both sides. If you're gonna do a pinched front or a front with dents, it's actually turning out really nice for an old hat. See that shaping up real nice. Add a little more heat to it to kind of get more of a defined look on the hat. And assuming that the hat that I showed you in the beginning that looks more or less like a five and a half inch crown. And this one fully stretched out as a four and a half. So we're working with at least an inch less on the crown itself. So we might actually add almost like a little bit of a bump in the middle, like a telescope crown or a teardrop crown. So it can fit the top of our head, but it won't be too noticeable once the hat is complete. I'm actually going to try this on right fast to see if I need room for the top of my head. Oh yeah, I'm going to need a lot of room for the top of my head. You can see that the dent comes way down in here so you can barely fit the top of your head. So what we're going to do is we're going to steam the top of it. And this is an easy way to fit your own hat. You're going to put a lot of heat on the top. And then once you put a lot of heat on the top, you are just going to set it on the top of your head. Now be careful because it should it is very warm still and make sure you're keeping the shape with your fingers. Make sure you're not obstructing any of the ridges or dents that you originally put in it. And we're going to hold it there for one second. That should be good. So I guess we are going to do a teardrop crown in sorts. Look at that. Fit perfectly to my head. That is the shape at the top of my head. So you can honestly say that this is a custom hat built for you, made by you. We're gonna give it a little more definition instead of just the crude undulation in the crown. We're kind of going to give it a little more sharpness, make it look a little more cleaner, a little more chic. Just like this, just work your fingers around like so and you're gonna get a more defined crown. It's gonna make it look real sharp, just like that. I'd say this is turning out pretty nice. Now that we got our crown pretty much sorted, we're gonna do our brim. Now you can do any brim like this. You can work the front edge up and match it, make it symmetrical on the other side. You can do on the sides here. You can do it even on the back. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a turn down brim, which flares the sides up a little bit, protects your neck from the hot prairie sun, and it shields your eyes from the sun in the front. Well, this is gonna be the easier part because you don't even have to work with the brim at this point. All I do is just run the steamer across the brim of the hat. Also, when you're doing this, make sure that the surface of what you're using to put steam on your hat or moisture is clean. 
because these get to very hot temperatures. And if there's anything on it like, you know, super glue or, you know, cat hair, it will bleed right into your hat and it will not be a good time. You'll probably end up ruining a part of your hat. We'll do it on the other side too. Make sure you're not getting the steam on that leather sweatband on the inside. You will ruin that leather sweatband and your hat may not fit right after. I do not have the wherewithal to take it out. I do not have an industrial sewing machine to put that band back in there. So I just avoid it at all costs. As you can see, the steam is into the fibers of the material and it's starting to evaporate. And what happens when moisture evaporates? It goes up. So we need to work with this hat while it's drying. So we're gonna do kind of a turn down brim. So kind of put your fingers at the base of your leather sweatband and kind of turn it down like that, which is a turn down brim. Kind of make it a little more over dramatic too, because like I said, the moisture is evaporating from the brim, which is gonna cause it to go up. And then we're gonna give it a little flare on the sides here. So we're gonna do a turn down brim with a little flare on the sides, just like so. Doesn't look half bad. I want a little more flare on the brim on the outside here. So I'm gonna add a little heat and kind of do one of these. This is kind of halfway between the front and the sides of the hat. So almost right in front of your ears. So there you go. That's our finished product. Now we do still have some steps to complete. So this is the part where we put our lining back in our hat. Nice silk lining here. We're gonna roll up the leather sweatband and here is the back. We're gonna place it in there. Make sure it's nice and lined up. And then once this hot glue is melted and ready to go, it's as simple as putting a few dots on the inside and then pressing the silk lining against the crown of your hat. Not too hard because you don't want to damage the crown in any way. And not too much because the heat will alter the shape of your crown as well. It appears the hot glue is ready to go. So we are going to put a small dab there. We are going to push it in. And I'm not going to show you the whole thing because it's pretty much the same process out of all 360 degrees of the crown. I'll probably do a sped up version so you guys can see it. And make sure you pull these little strings of hot glue off your hat, because if you go to reshape it again and that's sitting somewhere on there, it will go into the fibers of the wool or fur and it will not come out. And once your satin lining is in there, roll your leather sweatband back down. We're gonna take our drawstring and we're gonna feed it through our hats. Cause we are gunslingers after all and gunslingers get into gun fights. Therefore, you never know when your hat will blow off or get shot off, but you'll never lose it cause you got this drawstring. And we have a little slide to make sure you can tighten or loosen your drawstring whenever you so please. And then I usually just tie the ends so your slide does not come flying off. And there you have it. You have successfully shaped your own cowboy hat. Actually, I'm gonna add a little more flair to it. I did bring this out here, and I was talking about us being gunslingers. Add a little flair. When we walk into town, we mean some business. I know this has a ribbon on it, so it doesn't look quite right, but oh well. I mean, it adds a little bit of something there, don't you think? How about that? 
Looks like one you'd buy at a store, but you made it yourself. Let's wrap this thing up. Now I do have some hat stiffener, and means this is a kind of a cheap wool hat. It'll help the fibers tighten and keep your preferred shape. You don't need much. Here's a fun fact for you. In the early days, hatters would wipe mercury on the beaver felt hats to make it more sleek and shiny and more desirable for the person who was going to purchase it. However, they didn't know that mercury at the time made you go crazy. Therefore, that's why Stockholm Syndrome is nicknamed the Mad Hatter's Disease. What do you think, guys? I think this thing turned out pretty good, don't you think? That's how you craft a cowboy hat. You do it with warm, moist heat, and you saw it at the beginning. Looked nothing like this, and you gave it some panache. And anybody can do this. As long as you have an iron or a steamer, you can even take a pan and put it on your stove and boil a bunch of water and get the steam coming off of it. It's a longer process, but anybody can do it. Like I said earlier in the video, I taught myself how to do this. This was trial and error. It went from just putting like a telescope crown into a hat to working the brim. And then pretty soon I could order just a traditional six inch crown and four inch brim hat and I could craft my own creation. Like I said in the Wild West hat collection video, I built some of those hats from a base hat that I ordered from a store and I did my own modifications to them. I said it before and I'll say it again. If I can do it, you can do it. If you can go to Goodwill or thrift shops or something and probably find an old wide brim Western hat that you can try your hand at crafting yourself. And maybe you'll build a hat that you wear from today all the way up to two decades from now, who knows? It's a really rewarding thing because you built this with your hands. I think this one turned out pretty well today. Like I said, if I don't like this shape, even tomorrow, I can heat it up again, try a new shape, try a new crown, try a new curve on the brim. I hope you guys enjoyed today. My name is Andrew with St. Andrew TV. If you found this video helpful or like any of the content you see on this channel, please think about subscribing. You're a daisy if you do.